Is there a lot of people who've been harmed by TuneCore? Well, according to you guys, Yes, maybe just one person doesn't sue. What if we all sue? We are not done with TuneCore by any stretch of the imagination. And we, in fact, just hit what I like to call the nuclear option. When you're duking it out with a company or a person, especially when you hire an attorney, there's certain like levels of escalations. And usually it starts with something super simple, like a demand letter. Hey, here's the problem. Here's what you need to do. And that's where we started with TuneCore. And we wrote the demand letter, which then created more conversation and phone calls and follow-up letters of which I've showed you guys. And eventually it ended up going into this whole other thing that I normally don't have to deal with, which is I need you to prove that your client is a real artist, which has nothing to do with anything. And I was thinking about it today. I'm like, if I went into, because Wells Fargo is my new favorite comparison to TuneCore. I'm like, you know, because TuneCore is a glorified bank. A distribution company is a glorified bank. They don't really do anything other than collect your money, distribute the music, all that. And I'm like, I walk into Wells Fargo and Wells Fargo is like, because I'm like, I want to, you know, take out my money from getting paid from my employer. And Wells Fargo is like, I need you to prove that you're really an employee of this company before I give you your money. Right? That's really what this is. TuneCore is saying, before I give you money that was earned from DSPs, digital service providers, you need to prove that your client is a real artist, which has nothing to do with anything. So anyway, in the levels of escalation on the last video, or in the last discussion, we were talking about, there's basically like three options when you're not able to resolve something through just letters and general communication. So option number one, you as the artist, sue, right? So you say there's a violation of rights, whatever those look like. If you sue, there's usually a big financial expense connected to it. Lawsuits are not fast. They go on for years and years. So we have to think about all those things before filing. And for the average musician, for the average artist, the average producer, they don't have 50,000 or hundred thousand dollars laying around. Even if they have, let's say 40 grand, 70 grand, held by a music distributor, okay? So there's a barrier to entry. So but, but that's option number one, we sue. Option number two, well, maybe just one person doesn't sue. What if we all sue? In order to become a class, you have to get what's called class certification. So class certification is set by rule. And in fact, I think maybe it'd be helpful. Let me show you this. I think you guys get this. I think it'd be helpful to have the visual aid. So this is through the federal rules of civil procedure, just to give you a little context. All right, so these are the federal rules, right? So, you know, pursuant to each state. So in the case of TuneCore, we would be suing in New York. But what you should know is that most states follow federal rules. So, you know, in New York, it'd be something similar to this. But it basically says, if you want to bring a class action where we all get together, Together, and we're all going to sue TuneCore. It says one or more members of a class may sue or be sued as representative parties on behalf of all members only if. So these are the elements of how to be a class. The class is so numerous that joinder of all members is impractical. Impracticable. Two, there are questions of law or fact common to the class. Three, the claims or defenses of the parties are typical of basically everyone in the class. And for the representative parties will fairly adequately protect the interests of the class. You know, like we saw this in Travis Scott, the festival and then the loss of lives. And so, you know, they were seeking class certification because there were thousands and thousands of people who had been harmed and then lots of, you know, loss of life. So, you know, in any case, it'd be like, all right, is there a lot of people who've been harmed by TuneCore? Well, according to you guys, Yes, I've had a unique opportunity to use my channel to get some market feedback, some audience feedback on how many of you use that platform, how many of you have actually run into this exact issue or otherwise just weren't aware that the terms say that if there's a claim for all the things we went through, right? So claims of alleged copyright infringement, alleged trademark infringement, alleged fake streaming. So they give you a nice big block of all the potential things there could be a claim on. If there's just a claim, not that it's proven, but if there's just a claim to incorporate pursuant to its terms of use can forfeit your royalties, can take your royalties, take it for itself. And then it says in its terms that it can give it to a third party, just says that. And then a couple of you, which PS, I just love you guys. So there was a couple of you who actually reached out to me and even sent me like an email and you're like, hey, you you know, Wayback Machine, which I totally forgot about. Thank you so much. But you're like, you know, pursuant to Wayback Machine, we can actually look at their terms of use, which was a problem here, right? In our case, our clients, music and all this stuff had happened back in 2020. And so when you go to the terms of use today, it's been updated as of December, like 13th, I think it was, which I pointed out in my video. I'm like, that's really weird because we sent our demand letter saying your terms of service are unlawful on December 1st, 2023. And then they updated their terms of use like 10 days later. I was like, 
hmm, that's interesting. But anyway, so on the way, way back machine, went back to the, you know, the, the terms that applied at that time. And although not as well written, still basically said the same thing about the forfeiture of royalties. And I go, okay, so that means that for at least the last decade, which is, you know, how far back I went, for at least the last decade, that this is what TuneCore has been doing. So it's been taking artist royalties just based on claims and not that claims that had to be proven. Not that there was something that went to a case and there was a, a judgment, a final rendered judgment or settlement or anything like that, which was part of our problem here. We've gone through just months and months of duking it out with TuneCore and TuneCore still hasn't provided any evidence whatsoever of this alleged streaming fraud. And I guess, quite frankly, at this point, my position is I go, even if there was streaming fraud, that still does not entitle you to take someone else's money. And you guys made some great points and you're like, well, you know, what about the advertisers on the DSPs? I mean, they got defrauded here. Really? Like it should be if something like this happens, shouldn't it be that TuneCore is sending the money back to Spotify and that Spotify can like give the money back to the advertisers? So anyway, you guys, I, I, I've definitely appreciated the, the commentary. Back to options. <laughs> so the single artist, right? Sues. You seek class certification, which PS is going to be part of this TuneCore little update that I give you in a minute. But then there has to be kind of these elements that we satisfy. And so there has to be a whole lot of people. There has to be a common question, a common harm, you know, and do we have all those things? Lastly, how about we unionize? And so ultimately, like the whole idea of unionizing would essentially be that you have a common voice. And, you know, what I kind of looked at, because we covered this on this channel um, back in October of last year, visual effects artists, like, so it was the Marvel visual effects artists. They all came together and they're like, F this, our working conditions suck. They work us to death. We don't have, you know, good salaries. And so they're like, we need this collective voice. You know, we're going to basically join. And so I went through and I go, okay, if artists, if we were to unionize, what would that look like? Because that's pretty powerful and good on them because they did it. And now they have, you know, they're all together and, 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 and they can implement real change. Right. And then you have like the, you know, think about the Writers Guild of America. They had their big strike. They went on strike for five Five months and of their membership, it's about 11,000 people, 11,500 and writers, right? <laughs> so they went on strike and then it ended up resulting in SAG after, which is like the actors union. They went on strike too. So we had this, these two huge unions that drive Hollywood who went on strike. And because of that, they actually implemented meaningful change. And obviously that was an, you know, it, it really affected Hollywood at that time, but they made change. So I go back to, all right. So if artists you know, and producers and, and creators, right, in the music industry, were to unionize, the distinction that I'm kind of pulling out, I go, well, how do we do that? Because actors and writers, they're usually hired as employees, right, to act in movies, to write for a TV show, but that's not really the structure for a lot of music creators, right? We're like one-offs. Like if you're just, you know, a, a bedroom producer and you're making like $100,000 a year and all that because you make beats and you sell, you sell sample packs and stuff like that. How do you fit into this idea of being a union member? And I go, there's a way, okay? This would be a little, there's a distinction here and there's a reason why there still isn't a union. It's because this is going to be a little bit challenging. Not impossible, but a little bit challenging because really like the union goes in, it's like we need to renegotiate the rates for employment contracts. And if you or separately doing your thing, you are your own label, let's say, which I totally promote, and you are doing shows and touring, then you're not really being hired in the traditional way. And in fact, record labels, when you do sign with them or you sign publishing deals, you are not sign signing as an employee. They have you as contractors. That's one thing I just, you know, wanted to point out, but I go, okay, setting that aside. How do we do it? First, it's to start a discussion, which is why your participation in these conversations and leaving your comments and sharing out the videos and all of that is really helpful because it's bringing more people to the conversation to see if this is something that even we could do because you would need to have enough artists, enough producers who are game to do this. Well, after that, you'd have to choose the leaders who are going to be the voices of the group to actually lead the formation of the union. And I think obviously it would be really helpful if we had some people part of this and they don't, you know, have have to be huge artists, but that helps. It just does. When you have a big following, when you have, you know, a voice and you're, you're willing to use your platform to really drive this, it makes a difference. So you choose the leaders, you choose the affiliation. So I guess you have to, you know, join forces with an existing union, whether it's like national or international. I mean, like basically we need Taylor Swift. Okay. So we're going to get Taylor Swift and then we're going to be like, we need an affiliation that could be the American Federation of Musicians. Okay. So that's the one that serves just 
musicians who do things like they play in the orchestra, orchestral stuff in Star Wars, potentially getting the sign from them. And then you put together a petition and you file the petition with the National Labor Relations Board. And they're the ones that potentially would certify you. I would say us. So I wanted to at least plant that seed because uh, again, your guys' feedback has been really, really helpful on this. In fact, let me just read some of the comments that were some of my favorite from the last video. So Nova Roboto says 100% down to unionize. Yo, so, yo, so, yo, 4024 says, yes, I would support union. It's three, uh, Megan, ladies and gentlemen, we found the real Batman. I guess I'm the real Batman. I just had to throw that in. We should start a GoFundMe for the legal fees. I wanna see these companies taught a lesson, but that's kind of the idea with the union. It's that you would have a legal resource when it's like Truncor is doing this thing, it is unlawful. And so we need a union rep to go in and, you know, facilitate this change. And what I'm saying is that maybe there's a couple different ways that we could actually do this, but this is one way to do it via a union. Afrodap says a union would be dope. This would be a great way to bring community together and really learn how to thrive with a well-structured foundation. Yeah, because I mean, with a union, you have meetings and the idea is to always be like, what do artists need? What do music producers need? And I think because we're also disjointed and we might have like little communities and this and that, but really like everyone's on their own because everyone's just like, and not to say it's we're all out for ourselves, but it's just a different mentality. It's not like, well, oh, we're all actors and we're all getting hired by the SAG productions. It's we are in our own lane. And in a way we're unlike most other creators in the entertainment space. NJ1255, would it be possible for all artists who have had their earnings stolen by TuneCore to get together and file a class action lawsuit? Yes. And in fact, one of the claims, because we're going to talk about about this in a sec. But one of the claims against TuneCore, potentially, would be not just for, you know, breach of contract, but we want to have a court require that they rewrite the terms of use. And so that's called reformation. And so the actual, you know, claim itself pursuant to the state laws would be different. But the idea is it's reformation when a court comes in and the court's like, hey, you can't have this impermissible penalty provision in your contract that everyone is forced to sign. And P.S. Most of us, you know, don't even read these things, right? You probably don't read the terms of service for most of the things you sign up for, the different apps that you use, so on and so forth. But setting that aside, you should just read it. But setting that aside, it's not like you have an option to be like, hey, TuneCore, I really didn't like that sentence. Can you take that out? You don't have any negotiation power. You have to sign it. <laughs> and so you do. Sebastian Kumar, it's an undeniable fact. The crooks and fraudsters in the music industry, as you say, the artists are the ones in power. It's a matter of being more comfortable winning versus actually going, or is that whining? Whining versus actually going all hands on deck. So I think Sebastian's point is that either we can continue complaining about it or we can actually do something about it. And doing something about it can be scary. I mean, I talk about this with your guys' careers. I'm like, stop treating your music like a hobby. You have to switch your, you know, your mindset into being an actual business. You are a music business. As soon as you do that and you're like, no, I need to sell. I need to monetize. I need to do this and pretend like I was a label to make money and to actually grow my career. Malcolm says, I've been saying everyone else in entertainment has a union. Why don't we? We need larger artists and representation to start it. Taylor Swift, I'm saying, who do you guys think? Who do you think we should tap to, to come in and be the spokesperson? Lee White, I would never join an artist union because these things always get infested with self-interested rent seekers. However, as legal class action could be interesting. As an entertainment attorney, as a litigation attorney, we always look at these different options of like, what's the best way to really get the end result? And I told you that with this TuneCore situation, it's escalated now and we have have officially approached the nuclear option and I'll be showing you guys what we did. Doomsdale, there's been a strike in every industry, but the music industry, which is wild, it's time for a union. Yeah, that's why I mentioned the Writers Guild and SAG after strikes. Well, obviously, when there's enough people, and in the case of the Writers Guild, when you have 11,500 writers and these shows are dependent on these writers and they go, look, no, you know, I'm not, sorry, no can do until. Like, how could that even happen right now? It couldn't for artists, for music producers, but that's just now. Beat Avenger says, I think instead of a union, there should be a pool to pay for class actions. I wouldn't join a union, but I would kick some bread into a legal fund to improve artist platforms relations. Yeah, and we asked that question on the last discussion and it's just like, you know, would you throw in whatever it is for you, you, a union fee, five bucks, 10 bucks, 15 bucks to not only support the cause, you know what I'm saying, but to really invest in yourself. Supermodel Atlanta says, sue first, then become union. Let this case be a reference 
case law, so to speak, on why to become a union. All right, last last couple ones. If you have a union, why not then have the union work for on on creating an artist first distributor? Okay, I like this. I like this, and it's it's interesting because another YouTuber had mentioned to me about Gamma, which I'm um, I'm still kind of investigating, but like apparently Gamma's coming out as like the new for artists distributor, but apparently there's some controversy around that. One thing I will share because I know this question has come up. I'm like, well, who do I use as a music distributor? Because I know that across the board and someone had even left a comment they were like symphonic yeah here it is so nick petronio says man symphonic is shady too i was reading their terms the other night and there was a thing or two in there that made me pause but i'm not attorney but now you just said that you had this really upsetting situation with them it seems like music distribution industry standard and we have not gone through the fun of actually reading every single distributor's terms of use but in any case i have in fact had my music distributed through pretty much every major distributor the one that i'm currently with i'll show you their website right right now is Priam. It's Priam Digital. And so, you know, I know these guys, they're good guys. And I know from my personal experience that they just try to put the artist first. You know, at the end of the day, these music distributors are businesses and they're trying to make a profit. Some of the good comments that you guys are making is these are businesses and it's like a business model. And in fact, who was it? I, I, I have to give you a shout out by name. Let me find it. Who knows? Maybe they're going and paying for fake streams against some of these songs. So then they get flagged, it's fraudulent, and then they take your money. Do I think that's what they're doing? but it's a really smart point. Tiffany Anthony says, I was thinking, isn't it possible that TuneCore themselves could be botting their own system in order to embezzle people's money? It'd be brilliant, albeit illegal. I wouldn't put it past them. All right, so all really good points. So let's let's now turn our attention to where we are right now with, with the TuneCore situation. On our last go around, I was telling you guys that, you know, we uh, had had, you know, a big conversation. This was the whole, you need to prove that your artist is a legitimate artist, which was just silly. It's a nice way of saying it. So we had a big conversation. You have to prove it. We submitted all the things. There was no response, just crickets. And so continued to, to follow up and then finally get TuneCore on the phone. They just reiterate their position from literally months ago, which again, was just ignoring case law, which is ignoring, I mean, anything. And just said, you know, again, the whole your client's a scumbag. We think he's a big fraudster. We think it's unethical and we're not going to give him his royalties. After that, we obviously made the video and we started the discussion and we've been discussing like, well, what are we going to do? So here's what we put together and that went out a few days ago. All right. So this March 4th and I've redacted. So blackened out just some of the sensitive stuff. Our clients allowed us to talk about this, but we'll keep some of his information private. So this was directed to the senior attorney at, at TuneCore. And so we go, Mr. TuneCore man, over the past four months, our firm has dedicated significant effort and resources to amicably reconcile the disputes that TuneCore responded with against our client who is simply seeking his royalties, which identified in our original settlement communication, December 1, we talked about that, 2023, as related to the distribution of his sound recordings here after his music. Despite the lack of justification for TuneCore's actions, we've engaged in comprehensive dialogue, striving for a reasonable resolution. We have provided exhaustive evidence affirming our client's status as a legitimate artist. And if you guys remember, a part of that was just showing that this happens a lot. Artists will pay for Facebook ads. And so our client paid for or roughly $25,000, which is, as you know, a lot of money that can go a really far away on Facebook alone. So 25 grand, we're like, we're substantiating that he's, he's putting forth real marketing and promotional efforts, and then showing you the analytics of which we provided to them. You know, he had, he actually reached, what was it? 19 million people, a lot of impressions, da, 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 da. So he invested 25,000 Facebook ads for promotional efforts. These efforts were aimed to demonstrate our client's professional integrity and to try to appease TuneCore. However, TuneCore's demand that our client prove he is a legitimate artist was a needless diversion, bearing no relevance to the legal standards or requirements. So you basically just wasted our time. And that was actually proven in that literally you disregarded everything when we had a little chat with you afterwards. So as previously noted, the terms of use by TuneCore contain a unilateral right right? So a right held only by TuneCore to withhold artists earnings and even to actually give it to third parties it chooses. This forfeiture of royalties is applicable to any alleged violation, including claims brought by third parties. So meaning like I'm dealing with someone who is claiming it's a record label who's claiming that my artist's cover song is not supposed to be out there. And it's 
cover songs are permissible under the Copyright Act. So someone being like, ah, it's copyright infringement, and they're just an idiot, and they don't know copyright law. So that would be in an instance where someone has alleged a violation, which is then a violation of the TuneCore terms of use. So TuneCore, pursuant to its terms, can just kick you off and take your money. And they don't even have to have proof. This forfeiture of royalties, the allegations brought by third parties, which shockingly need not even be proven true. As previously noted, TuneCore's terms of use violate New York law and qualifies as an impermissible penalty. New York law is clear. An unenforceable penalty provision exists when there's no estimate of the extent of the injury to be sustained as a result of the breach of the agreement. Because guys, this is the whole thing. If you have a contract, there has to be a fair compensation kind of thing. And that's what this was, the principle of just compensation for loss. So, you know, our bottom line is TuneCore has suffered no harm or loss, and it's required to release all of our clients' royalties, regardless of its, quote, ethical stance. This is the first page. And now we're getting into the call of action. So what we want to do is obviously we're like, dude, it's been four months. Here's all the things that have happened. So we're just summarizing at this point. And now we're getting to the actual call of action before we go next. Given the immense efforts by our firm to resolve this dispute without litigation and TuneCord's persistent refusal to engage in meaningful dialogue and address the evidence provided, we find ourselves at a deadlock. We have reached the end of our resources for amicable negotiation. If this matter is not resolved promptly, we are prepared to escalate this situation legally to ensure recovery of our clients' rightfully earned royalties in addition to any other claims and damages available at law. Please note, this issue related to our, our clients' unpaid royalties has gained significant traction online, resulting in tens of thousands of artists, many of whom use TuneCore, agreeing a class action against TuneCore may be appropriate. So we're putting it out there at this point. And we go, because of you guys and because of your support on this, if we have to go the distance on this, we're going to. Because this is incredibly outrageous. Not just for our client, but for any of you that have been affected in the same kind of way or otherwise, you just don't even know that this is the case. And so it's just a matter of time. If it doesn't happen to you, great, but it could. And it's important that you just know what you signed. I say this for when you sign with record labels. I go, everything might go great, but understand what you signed. You just gave away ownership of your music. So I just want you to understand, even in the best case scenario, you wanna make sure you know what's going on. So let's keep going. Attached here too, you will find a drafted complaint to be filed in the state of New York Supreme Court Kings County Commercial Division. We urge TuneCore to reconsider its stance and engage in constructive resolution to avoid further legal action. If further delay or refusal occurs, our client is willing to proceed with the complaint and seek class certification for all other artists harmed by this unlawful conduct by TuneCore. Our office otherwise promoted TuneCore to our large client base prior to this matter. We find it disgraceful that TuneCore would reject standing law, call our client a scumbag, and otherwise attempt to penalize him out of spite. We offer one last time for the parties to be able to walk away from the situation without having to incur substantial expense of going through litigation. We hereby demand the immediate purge payment of all royalties associated with our client's accounts. And then we give them a final deadline of the 8th, which is two days from today. The following day, I got a response. And this was from TuneCore's senior counsel. He said, Crystal, we received your letter. We will give it internal discussion and get back with you. And that's where we stand. A music attorney is your number one legal resource for artists, producers, and record labels. Get contract templates, one-on-one -on -one legal advice, free master classes, and everything you need for your music business. Go to topmusicattorney.com. So, you know, I call it the nuclear option on when you try to handle these matters and they continue to escalate. Really the best situation is if you are gonna threaten to sue, that you be ready to pull the trigger. And that's why we actually drafted the complaint. And I'm not gonna show it just because it goes in and it shows all the evidence and, and cites to all the claims, but I will share with you that in the complaint, the claims that we are asserting are reformation of contract, Okay, so as I was I was noting, if you sign a contract and you're like, there was a misunderstanding, there were fraudulent terms, there was something that happened that shouldn't be part of the contract, you can ask the court to strike out that language and say it shouldn't be in there. And that was the 
penalty stuff, right? So we go, you can't just penalize someone and just be like, ah, you broke the contract. You owe me a million dollars. You can't do that. You have to have damages that are fairly situated to the damage that's actually caused by someone breaching a contract, which is what TuneCore is saying. They're saying you breach our contract by doing your little fake streams. And then we also claim conversion. Conversion is the, uh, the civil version. So civil meaning like rather than criminal, civil, I'm suing you. So conversion is basically like theft. So you go, someone took money that doesn't belong to them and or kept it, which is what we're saying. So conversion, also unjust enrichment. If you have been enriched, in our case, our client has tens of thousands of dollars with TuneCore. So we go, TuneCore, you don't get just to pocket all this money from just, you know, our client. And then deceptive business practices. I don't think that its users know this is the case. Now, now you guys do, right? We're chatting about it. But I think for everyone who has signed up and been with TuneCore and maybe lost access to their accounts, small or big, whatever the amount of money was, it's deceptive in that you think that you are going to Wells Fargo and putting your money in so you get your money out. And then it turns out Wells Fargo is like, we're just going to take it if these things happen. So where do we go from here? One of the big things here is obviously going to be TuneCore's response. On one hand, if TuneCore responds and releases the money, that's a great win for our client. He spent a lot of money, a lot of time. This is super frustrating to have to go through. And at the end of the day, what we do really well is we win cases and we get good end results. That's just, we've done it for over nine years. But on the flip side of this, if they give the proverbial middle finger and say no, and they're like, just keeping the same, you know, he's a fraudster. We're not releasing any of the, the royalties. Well, going back to the conversation about A, the complaint, but B, seeking class certification. And how many people are actually harmed by TuneCore and how many people would sign on to this? And that's a question that I have for you guys watching this. And again, I really appreciate that you have been sharing this out because, you know, obviously people on TuneCore aren't going to know about this unless they just happen to see something on social media, you know, or they get fed something on YouTube if they use YouTube. And so you're just trying to really like spread the message on things can be the most challenging part. But going back to the whole, that's how we actually make change, not just with TuneCore, but with everyone who is part of the hierarchy that is the music business. The lowest on the totem pole are artists and producers. And even on under that are the songwriters and everyone above them who are exploiting artists and making money from their music, whether it's music distributors or publishing companies or record labels. And, you know, my thing is that needs to change. And it changes when, you know, it's the whole approach of do you use the stick or the carrot? We can ask nicely. We can beg. We can be like, ah, oh, this is terrible. Or we can go on with a stick. I'm a stick kind of girl. So I definitely invite you guys to, to, to make sure that, you know, keep an eye on your numbers. Keep an eye on what's going on and to, to you know, exercise this, this, awareness of what is happening, but then also help to just spread the message. And in the meantime, because who knows what's going to happen with TuneCore? Countdown has started. We have two days and typically we'll get a response on the day that it's due. And either way, I think that there needs to be something like this has started such an incredible conversation and it's got me thinking because I built this whole platform. I built Top Music Attorney because after running my law firm for nine years and just working with everyone in the entertainment field, my love, my passion is music. I've done it since I was four years old. I still make music today. It's just my, it's just my thing. And I just really want to help you guys. So I started Top Music Attorney as a way to just put all the free information out there. If you're going to take the time to invest in yourself and watch these videos, which may not even be like, look, you know, hey, I'm going to watch the five tips on how to market my music. Like that might not be as fun as watching something else. But if you're going to take the time and invest in yourself and help your own career, like I'm about to say Chrissy word. Fuck yeah. And I want to help you grow. I'm looking at all the ways that we really can make these changes because, you know, something else that happened was the Music Modernization Act in 2018, which basically amended the Copyright Act, which is so old. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know, work for how the digital age is right now. But anyway, so we had, you know, these 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 ringleaders who came in and like Adina Lapolt, she's an attorney out of California. And so anyway, so she just led led the way and she goes, we really need to just make these changes, including, you know, how we're able to handle music online online platforms and stuff like that. And I'm just like, when we're talking about this, why isn't there a union? Why hasn't someone kind of led the way in this? You guys are just leaving such like smart, insightful comments. That's getting me excited. That's getting me thinking. In any case, please continue to share this out. Make sure obviously you subscribe. You're here. I'm here to help you. Yeah, I guess check back <laughs> because we will have an update one way or another for you on TuneCore here in a few days. Thank <laughs> you.